hi guys welcome to the sixth video of the pink scraper series so we have reached quite far with the other five videos and in this video we're going to be working on the bing result parser where we take an unstructured response that we're getting from calling the apis for all those urls and we're going to structure it uh, in this case right and structure it based on our struct that we have created for search result and we're going to return that to our bing scrape function which basically appends it into our into this results variable and it returns that to func main where it just prints it out simple and straightforward so this bing result parser it takes a couple of things right uh, it takes this response and it takes something called as rank so let's write here response which is of type pointer dot uh, HTTP dot response and takes a rank which is of type int and it returns a slice of type search result and it runs an error if there's an error and before we get into that i think what i'll do is i'll actually uh, copy and paste the remaining user agents like i told you you know you'll just have to copy and paste from my github code i'll leave the link below in one of the comments or in description so i'll copy and paste it here and for our bing domains i'll copy and paste the bing domains as well so so here are all our bing domains and here are all our user agents and now we can get back to our bing result parser okay now in our bing result parser we have uh so we're going to be using our go query package here so we'll say go query dot there's a function called new document from response so when i was using go query package i didn't exactly tell you what it does right so it basically helps you to take the response that you received after calling a url and creates a document from that response and once you create a document from the response you can then run multiple operations on it which we'll do shortly so you send it a response and it gives you a document so we'll say document comma error so it can return a document or it can return an error right so as you know with golang whenever it turns an error we have to handle the error so we'll say if error not equal to nil which means if error is there then you will return nil for the search results and you'll just return the error directly and here we'll take a, var a variable called results and make it equal to search result empty for now and now there are some terms uh, and some IDs and divs and elements that are specific to Bing. So I have already taken the pain of going through the responses that you get from Bing and uh, understanding where do you get those links, where do you get titles, where do you get descriptions, you know, all of those things. So we need we need these things, right? We need the URL, the title, description, all these things. So they come in particular uh, elements or divs basically inside the um, inside the results that are sent to back to you from Bing. So I've already taken the pain and identifying those. So you don't you all you have to do is just follow what I'm doing here on screen, right? Or you can also uh, take a look at the response uh, as in print out the response to your terminal that you get from Bing and then you can you know break it down yourself uh, by printing out this doc. All right. So here we'll take a variable called cell and we'll say doc dot find we need to find something called as li.b underscore algo. All right. And then we'll uh, increment our rank by one. 
and now the cell contains a lot of nodes so we'll have to range over all those nodes so we'll say range cell dot nodes but here I'll also say for i is equal to all right inside cell dot nodes we'll have something called as an item cell dot eq i and we'll say link tag so link tag helps us to get the link tag and we'll say item so this is the item and using that item we can now run item dot find so first we look for a so as you know with links basically have this a tag right with the html so we are we've converted the html response that we got into a document which which will have uh, which will create it searchable for us and we can run all these uh, all different operations on it so we'll say find a and to get our link so we need something called as link as you can see here so for link we'll say equal to link tag inside this link tag inside this a tag you will also have href right so you'll say dot attribute href and then you'll say title tag item dot find h2 so the h2 will be the title and then you need your description tag for description tag you have dsc tag dot text to get the description the value of the description you will say inside the description tag and for the title tag we'll say title tag dot text all right so you you got your title you got your description which is basically what you wanted right title and description and url is the link so you got all of that there now we'll say link is equal to strings dot trim so let's trim all the spaces out and now we'll have to you know process the link a little bit so we'll say if link not equal to empty and link not equal to a null link which is hash and uh, the link does not have a prefix to a different page which is with slash then you'll say result equal to search result and here you'll say rank right so your rank your URL title and description your rank your link which has the url your title which has the title and description desc which has description after that you'll say results is equal to append inside this results which is a slice of type search result you're going to append the result and you're going to say rank plus plus And from this function, you return the results and the error. So it's, uh, this is quite a function. This is quite a program, as, as, as in it has a lot of different details. And we want to try running it. And when we try running it, it's going to give us errors. And I uh, and I know that for a fact. <laughs> All right, so let's run it so let's say go run main.go so as you can see you see all these 
different errors, which is, uh, and it says too many errors. That means that even if you solve all of these, there will be many more errors after that. And most of them have to do with brackets and all these uh, you know, assignment operators and I++, all of those th different things. So what we'll do is we'll start solving these errors one by one, and then we'll see uh, you know, how many more are there to solve. So if you're uh, a developer, I'm sure you're very, very comfortable with seeing so many errors. But if you're new to development, you'll probably get overwhelmed and you'd, you'd think uh, that you, know, you can avoid these errors while coding uh, and you can do that you can be like very very particular you can be you know you can pay a lot of attention to detail I don't believe in doing that I believe in just writing out the code that, that's you know when I'm in the flow and I believe in um, fixing errors later on you know like this I right? try running the code and I get a lot of errors and I try and fix them later on so let's get started with the errors now so let's look at the first error here it says line number 13 Let's go to line number 13. Okay, so here the issue is we have to put a var here because it's a variable, right? So that's why it says non declaration statements outside the worry function, right? Makes sense. Line number 13 fixed. Now let's go to line number 61. Line number 61, it says unexpected new line, expecting comma or bracket. So let's say unexpected new line because we've not put a comma here. Now the thing with Golang is that the errors are so clear that it tells you exactly what it's looking for, right? It's not like JavaScript. JavaScript, you'd spend hours looking for uh, the exact issue if you have uh, experience with Node.js, right? Uh, with Golang, everything's so clear. You, uh, I mean, this is why I'm so confident in writing Golang code uh, without you know, even thinking twice and making all these mistakes because I know I'll be able to fix them in a minute because it tells me exactly on which line, exactly what the issue is and what it's expecting, right? So let's go to line number 80 now, line number 80. So now it says, oh sorry, I've clicked this by mistake. Now it says on line number 80, cannot use I++ as value. And why could that be? It's because here, instead of comma, I had to put a semicolon. Now. I can easily edit this video and fix all these errors, right? And or or uh, from the beginning, I can write the right code because uh, you know by checking every single line. But I don't do that because I want to make mistakes. I want you to see how you know the mistakes uh, that you'll make in the real world when you work on like big production scale applications and how do you solve them? And with GoLang, like I said, you know it's not an issue at all. So and you go to line number eighty again. It says unexpected. So this is unexpected says, but I'm, I think, you know, I have uh, a feeling that once we've put this, all of the errors that it, that's showing after uh, line number 80 till line number 81, all of these will go away. That's what I think, you know, but even if they don't go away, not a problem, we'll come back and we'll solve them later. But for now, I'm going to ignore these 80, 81 lines because I know it's because of uh, that semicolon, right? Now you can go to line number 152. So let's go to line number 152. And here it says it's expected new line or comma. So let's put a comma here. Cool. Line number 190. Okay. So with line number 190, 91, 92, 92 again, there are all these different errors. And that's because when we declared our func main, we didn't put these empty brackets. We don't have any parameters, but still we'll have to put those into practice to show Golang that's actually a function, right? So again, all of these are really silly mistakes, very, very small silly mistakes, but uh, you will be making those mistakes, right, in the real world. And when you make them with JavaScript, uh, I mean, if you have experience with JavaScript, you know how long it takes to fix these, but with Golang, it tells you exactly what the issue is. Now let's run the program again. So it gives us some more errors. Now let's try and find, fi uh, fix those as well. So here it says on line 87 undefined error. Let's go to line 87. Okay, so this error is undefined it says. And that's because here we should have said error equal to fmt dot error. Right, so because this is the build bing URLs, and um, yeah, so this 
it won't trouble us anymore. And now let's go to line number 142, title tag is not defined, 142. It says title tag is not defined. So this, this is because we don't have an equal blue sign here. And now everything should be okay. And after line 142, where it said where it said title tag defined not used, we have fixed that now. The other errors are with 143, 145, and 154. 143, 145, 154. And now it says on, um, so the, these two errors, you can assume that they've been caused by this title tag issue, right? But on 154, it says the first argument of pen must be slice. Now we know that the first argument results is a slice because we just defined it as a slice here, out here. And uh, it should have have struct result rank int your string st string and string again, right? So this this means that it's not able to uh, you know find this type of structure like these different int struct string string all these it's not able to find that properly and that could be an issue because uh, uh, you know created from this part where we had the title tag uh, tag is not equal to where we had that issue and because of that maybe this is getting created and again at the end it says on 154 it said that this result is not defined right that this whole result thing is not defined and so I have a feeling that uh, it's because of those issues, but let me also check again once more. Uh, this actually should have been result, right? Yeah, so this should have been result. And then result at least now will be uh, defined. And that's what it was also saying, I think. But these issues are again being caused by title tag and title tag m might have also uh, would will also cause issues here on this line because it's not defined title right you won't be able to extract the title from title tag if title tag was was not defined so we have fixed this issue as well this is here as well and now i think everything should work so let's see if there are any more errors yeah so there are more errors it says uh, undefined description tag so i was wrong when i said uh, that um uh you know that uh, this is actually dependent on this it's not dependent on this it has uh you know it has its own issue so here i think we'll have to write item dot find because we want the tag exact tag right so we'll say to find i is small and here we'll put the exact element where bing keeps their descriptions now once we run it uh, things seem to be working but I don't see anything on the and the output and that could also be a problem that could also be a an issue let's wait for a while and see what's happening out here so we've passed that we need two pages 30 results with a delay of 30 seconds and it's well here it's not doesn't seem to be working so we'll have to find another solution to fix it I think so what we can do here is we can reduce this to single page we can reduce this to 15 so that uh, at least what I think is happening is that it's taking too long to uh, parse all those results. That's what I think is happening. And so let's go run main.go again and let's wait for a while and see what happens. Since now there are less pages and less results to be fetched, I'm hoping that it doesn't take the same amount of time. it's taking too long maybe what I can do is I can pause this video and then restart it again so that oh yeah sorry it's here all the results are here it takes a while basically to get uh, you know all this information from Bing uh, so this is these are the results that you get if you search Akhil Sharma right so there's 
uh, and there's an author called Akil Sharma, so most of the results are his, <laughs> you know, so none of the results are mine here. Um, so these are the results. So you, can, you could be searching for anything here. And like I said, you know, it's taking time, but you can try your hand, you can try it, well, a couple of different results, and you'll get all of that here. So I hope you learned a lot in this video. I mean, I did go line by line. I tried to explain every single function, every single line of code, and why it's written and what's happening exactly. Even if you don't understand anything, you can just put everything in the comments below, right? Whatever uh, doubts you're having, and I'll try and fix them. And uh, do subscribe to this channel so that you come to know when uh, I create other videos. So we have some really interesting series coming out, right? You may have seen those teaser videos for Golang plus React courses and cryptocurrency Golang courses. So do stay subscribed. And uh, thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.